Welcome back to Martins and More. My name is Maury Rooch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. And this episode is brought to you by the Martin D. Homeward. The D. Homeward celebrates famed American-style tattoo pioneer Norman Sailor Jerry Collins. It features flamed koa back and sides, an amazing artwork made possible by a technique called sand shading. It's a gorgeous collector's piece and truly a sight to behold. For more information on the Martin D. Homeward, please visit maurysmusic.com or contact us today. All right, we have a lot to talk about today. What's going on, Spoon? Well, I am sitting here on a beautiful spring day. Uh, finally, we are in May. And, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Are, are we rhyming everything today? <laughs> you just rhymed today with May. <laughs> so I would have to say, maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, I want to say that, you know, after April shower weather for quite a while, all of a sudden, uh, where I'm at in Brooklyn, everything is green and lush and so colorful. It's almost like some of those uh, very cool one-off fancy Martins that were at the NAMM show that were made in the custom shop uh, that had, you know, these just very elaborate, interesting uh, glittering designs and that's what the world seems like with the bright sunshine over the past couple of days so so uh, pretty cool ah i see what you did there why don't we spend today talking about custom shop martins more especially custom shop martins here at maury's music but before we get too far i should ask you what is a custom shop martin well uh, um the definition might in some minds have changed over the years but not actually really um, long, long ago, Martin uh, would always take customer orders. There's, de there's all kinds of vintage Martins out there that have one-off uh, things. They called them special orders back then. Uh, traditionally, it was still a matter of a, uh, of a dealer making the order for a customer, uh, except in the case of some very special uh, celebrities back then, like Jimmy Rogers, people like that, that, you know, that uh, ordered and still paid for their Martin guitar, but with with you know special inlay and stuff like that, um, and the special order idea quietly uh, lasted up at least into the 1950s. And uh, today there is the custom shop, and when you order a custom Martin, you go to your dealer with what you want, and they're basically you're encouraged to base it on an existing model. And that also is a way to try to figure out how, uh, what's the most economical way to get your custom Martin is you want the base model to be as close to what you want uh, as possible. So there's fewer changes and all that. Um, but when I first uh, became involved in Martin guitars, the uh, custom shop was a brand new idea and it wasn't an actual place at Martin. It was basically an office where Bob Fair, who was the head of the custom shop, and maybe one other assistant, uh, that was the custom shop. And the work was all being done out on the floor, but it was the guitars would go around with a, a special manifest, and it would only go to uh, veteran employees. And they would initial at each, at each step of the way. And so you were still getting a custom guitar. It was still made by uh, the you know, elite artisans and craftsmen and craftswomen at Martin Guitar, um, even though there wasn't, you know, this, this like workshop there where these little elves were all working as like people imagine <laughs> custom shops to be. But then again, it changed when they came out with the original authentic uh, models. And this predates the authentic series. Uh, well, the first one was the D18 uh, 1937 authentic. Then they did a D, uh, the triple O eighteen and a D twenty eight, and ultimately a D forty five, nineteen forty two, and these were different than the modern day authentics. Um, they made them in small batches. They basically weren't based on a specific vintage guitar like they are today. They were trying to replicate the construction that they did back then in terms of the tucked bracing and the T-bar in the neck and the high glue construction and the thin finish and all that, those things that they came up with. And that was the first time that Martin segregated some craftsmen and craftswomen 
in their own area in a very small team. I think originally it was only four or six people that were building those those guitars. And that became the pilot program for a separate custom shop that we have today. And it's not that separated. If you go on the tour, when you come in the front door, you're very near the custom shop. And it's an open area that uh, where you can see people working at their workbenches and and see the uh, custom guitars on the you know racks that are that that are being worked on or that are you know getting ready to go to finishing and all that. And if those of you who are familiar with the tour, as you come by the that really big decorative guitar that doesn't have a top on it, so you can see the bracing and stuff. If people know what I'm talking about. It was originally a parade float from long ago, but <laughs> it's uh, when you're walking by that, you're right by the the custom shop, and um, and so today you order your custom shop once it uh, once it's agreed upon by the customer and the dealer uh, and Martin. Um, it goes to them. It takes uh, you know because these are being handmade by a small group of people inside the Martin factory. They take months up. You know, couldn't even be a year depending on how unique or unusual your custom guitar is. And uh, you know, one pearl of wisdom is the less Pearl inlay you have, um, the faster your order is probably going to come because inlaying per pearl in fancy style 41s, 42s, 45s, and so forth as a uh, extremely time consuming uh, and uh, enterprise. So, um, but anyway, that's what happens now. And I've had uh, custom guitars. The very first custom guitar I had gotten from Mari's Music was a custom what I would have called back then a custom M18 that had an Adirondack spruce uh, top and uh, golden ear bracing. It had a cutaway and a blank fingerboard. So it was similar to the Lawrence Juber OM18, but it had a, also a custom neck shape that Martin did for me uh, based on my old uh, OM28 VR that had an abnormally low profile for a v-neck and that was really suited my hands and uh, that's going back all the way back to 2004 or 5 maybe i don't remember but uh so i got that from mari's music and nowadays in addition to mari's music taking in custom orders and i'll let mari talk about that in a minute uh as he mentioned they also order a lot of guitars from the custom shop, which means they're being constructed in the custom shop by the custom shop staff with uh, some subtle changes from some of the uh, most popular Martin models. But Mari, let's say I'm, I would like to get a uh, look into getting a custom Martin that I'm designing from Mari's music. What, what should I do? Get in line, baby. <laughs> no, it's actually becoming more popular, and I say that with uh, with a lot of love. Over the years, we really see it ramp up. The longer we go through this, the more the custom shop idea seems to get a lot of traction with customers, and it's it's no surprise if you're going to look at Martin's lineup, they they probably offer almost 200 models now, from the X series all the way up to the the most expensive thing you can find. But there's always going to be that one little wrinkle. You might like everything about a guitar except. Uh, one or two little features, the custom shop is a great way to go. And the way you would do it, when you go to the Martin tab on mariesmusic.com, you'll see a lot of drop-down options populate. One of those tabs is going to be called, literally, the custom shop request form. And that's where we want you to go ahead and spell out exactly what you want. Uh, make no mistake about it. The, the more accurate you can be in the very first time you connect with us, the better we can serve you by taking your wishes and going right to our Martin rep. And then we can certainly speak via email and on the phone all throughout the process. So we don't, you don't have to use that custom shop form alone. But even if we are talking with you on the phone, exchanging emails back and forth, before it's all said and done, and we're ready to take your idea to Martin to get you an official quote, we do want you to use that form so we can copy and paste your ideas. And I don't want to put a wet blanket on this great episode otherwise, but you mentioned it could take months up to almost a year for the custom shop. As we're recording this in the spring of 2023, the sad news is it's at least a year. We've been telling people 14 to 16 months now for most customs. And secretly part of that is we like to 
under promise and over deliver. If something comes in a little bit early, you're gonna be happy, but delays can happen. Uh, so the first thing you need to know when you wanna build a custom shop Martin, are you ready to wait over a year? And are you sure there isn't already a Martin model in the current standard catalog that would make you happy? And it might seem counterintuitive, but whenever somebody does ask us about, you know, I wanna build X, Y, Z, can you help me? If there's something that Martin already does make, we feel like it's our job and our responsibility to let you know, of course, we would love to take your idea, go to Martin and make this perfect guitar for you, but were you also aware that they do make this other guitar that has almost everything you want? And every once in a great while, somebody might say, you know what, you know, that's not the inlay that I was looking for, but boy, you have it in stock and I can get it at a better price. Uh, than waiting, you know, till till a custom shop guitar is built. You know, some things can be sacrificed and some things can be, you can look at, at different compromises that might make sense and might not. But we do want you to come to us and use our custom shop form uh, to help start the process. And it's worth noting, the first quote is free with no obligation. But after that, if you want to make some revisions, changes, or start with a whole nother quote, at that stage, we would have to ask for a non-refundable deposit just to make sure that we're not wasting our Martin reps time and that everybody in the chain is working to the same goal. Uh, we are not the destination for those customers that are just a little bit curious. Hey, what would it cost to make a, an HD28 with a, this little difference? That's not what we're doing here. We're actually trying to connect you, the real customer, with a custom. So uh, there is a Martin configurator on Martin's website that can help you get the ballpark started, but it's for those serious customers who do want to go through with a quote uh, that we are certainly inviting to reach out to us and get the ball rolling. And so I could just call you to discuss it at first or send you an email, but ultimately I will be using that request form once we have a really good idea of, of what it is I want to order. Is that correct? Exactly. We invite you to speak to us as many times as you want to on the phone, but when it's all collected and we kind of agree back and forth verbally what you want, we just feel like it's such a better double check, for lack of a better term. Uh, we might have spoken a few times on the phone. We're not going to simply call Martin and put two verbal opportunities for misinterpretation. We do want it in writing so we know exactly what you're trying to say. And every once in a while it works out that, you know, you might email us and, and say, hey, we talked yesterday on the phone. Remember, I want this guitar. And we're like, I'm glad you emailed because that's not what you said or that's not how we took it. <laughs> and it, it's not often, but it's just so much safer that among all the phone calls we can take from you, uh, we definitely do want to have something in writing. And that's how we'll do it. We'll certainly, you know, speak with you and give, give you our advice Andrew does a really good job here with the customs. He's in charge of the custom shop program. And while we know a lot about Martin guitars, we don't know better than you. So while some dealers might, not to talk about other dealers, but if you come across other dealers who want to tell you this is what you should do in the custom shop, you won't find that here. If, we, if you're asking us for advice and you want to get something built and you have this question about would this bracing really sound good on this body size, well, sure. We'll definitely give you our two cents and we'll ask Martin you know, hey, our customer has this little reservation. Do you think it's smart to go quarter inch bracing on this jumbo size body if the customer's idea is to arrive at this certain sound? Those kind of things are fine. But what we won't do is tell you, hey, I see you respect this custom. What I recommend is if you're not asking for us to recommend something, we're not going to step in. We're not going to get in your way. We're just going to do all we can to be a helpful, if not neutral, uh, place to buy your custom and it, it's been a lot of fun. We see a lot of great things come through. I'm one of those guys that really thrives on instant gratification. Somebody might come to us with a good idea and I'll think it's pretty cool and I'll put it away and Andrew and I'll talk about it and it goes through production. When it finally gets here, I'm like, wow, that is a great idea. Now that I see it and play it, uh, a lot of things that I kind of suspected would be cool are just so literally mind blowing when they do arrive here. We just got a custom in today. Uh, that, that I knew was going to be a pretty neat idea, but now that I see it, it's, it's a lot of fun to see the end result, especially, uh, for better or worse, if you have over a year to forget about it. So these, these customers who asked us for customs, you know, last spring, and they're finally going to start turning up. I don't want to imply they forgot the order was happening, but, uh, you know, we take so many orders all day long. I definitely don't look at the calendar expecting to see, you know, Chris's OM18, for example, but when it shows up, Boy, is it a fun reminder when you get to, you know, play it and inspect it. Well, that's definitely one of the perks to your job. Not only do you get to play the different new models that they come in, uh, you get to, you know, when you're doing your uh, 
your check, you know, your quality control check, you get to, to get to do that with all the cool uh, custom shop models. Now I had mentioned my, uh, my custom shop uh, model, and I'll mention another one, what, which is the, uh, the ones that you guys, uh, that I designed that you actually sold a batch of, which was uh, a short scale Tripolo, Guatemalan Rosewood, Adirondack Spruce Top, quarter inch scallop bracing, and in the uh, styling of a pre-war Vintage 21 guitar that I was made in homage to one of my all-time favorites, which was now the late David Lindley and his uh, 1940 or 41 uh, Triple O 21. But that also had a large sound hole. That I, was my idea to come up with. And, um, and also had a 12 foot, uh, 12 foot. A, uh, the radius uh, was 12 inches rather than 16 inches. All right. And, you know, just little things like that that you don't typically uh, find on a Martin guitar. Um, but I was going to ask you before we go uh, into into some of the uh, very cool custom shop guitars you now have in stock. Uh, you mentioned a uh, custom that came in. And uh, can you think of any, like, you know, customs, recent customs, you know, that just give us some ideas of some of the stuff that people have been ordering you know, as a custom Martin? Absolutely. We have received some really cool stuff recently. For example, John ordered a 0028 VS slot head with maple binding, but a 1 in 11 16 inch nut. Our friend Damien designed a guitar that combines some features of the 0028 Clapton and the original OM28 John Mayer, but opted for the thin finish package. And instead of choosing from Martin's lineup of electronics, he requested that I install a K&K Pure Mini and a custom pickguard that he sourced from a company called Halter Pick Guards. So you could say he really, really customized that custom process. The other one that comes to mind that's probably the most recent, our friend Chris designed an OM18 with an Adirondack top, amber tone finish, European flamed maple binding, and a deep body. And that reminds me, I remember the very first deep body OM that Martin put out as a model was the Pat Donahoe model, who had been the... Uh, uh, if I remember, he was the only player to win uh, the uh, Winfield Guitar Contest in flat picking and finger style in different years, uh, if I got that correct, and was the guitarist on the Prayer Home Companion for many years. But huh. uh, I think his, and they also did those women in music models that were deep body double O's that came out before that, uh, that uh, deep body OM. But I think people have always liked the idea of it. And so I'm not surprised that, you know, you're seeing custom shop orders for uh, deep bodies, double and triple O's, um, and, uh, or, you know, or OMs. Um, so that's very cool. Now, you had also mentioned, uh, you had mentioned how it's like 14 to 16 months now. I'll just point out to people, you'll be surprised how fast it goes by. Uh, at first, you'll be like, you know, thinking it's a long way away, but uh, you're going to have that guitar for so much longer then then you had to uh, wait for it. So, you know, I think uh, you find the majority of the people think it's more than worth the wait, literally. And, um, but as Mari pointed out, uh, there's times when there is something that's already there out there. And if it's not something that's in the regular catalog, it might be uh, something that a dealer like Mari's Music already orders because they know it's one of those changes that they uh, get a lot of comments about. That And um, so why don't we take a look at some of those uh, guitars, because I know uh, you've just gotten some in recently. Uh, but you've actually been doing this for a while now. So I'd like to like kind of go through the uh, Martin models that are being made in the custom shop exclusively for Mari's music uh, that you came to after your many years of experience of helping people order uh, custom Martins. Um, but in this case, these are not wild changes. They're, they're subtle changes that a lot of people have said, well, I like that model, but I wish it had this instead of that. So uh, can you maybe think of one? We were just talking about, uh, you know, triple O's and OM's. Why don't we look there first? What do you have uh, what sort of uh, triple O's or OM's are you ordering? Uh, maybe we can take those through maybe one at a time and talk about them. Well, sure. And I like your point about, you know, not changing too many things. There, 
this is something any dealer can do, and it shouldn't come as any surprise that you might go and look for a custom shop, Triple O Martin, for example, and find that some dealers, and this is just hyperbole, but some dealers might take a Triple O 18 and change the nut width, the top, the bracing, the headstock inlay, and maybe the fingerboard inlay. And like my sister likes to say a lot when someone says, that steak looks delicious on Facebook, how do you season it? And she'll say, just very little bit. You still want to taste the steak. You don't want to take something as perfect as a triple O eighteen <laughs> and change seven and a half things about it. Well, now, is it really a triple O eighteen anymore? So right or wrong, we take the minimalist attitude where we've taken things like the triple O eighteen and the triple O twenty eight, for example, to answer your question quickly. And in one case, we made a custom where the only difference is the neck width. So instead of the traditional one and three quarter inch nut on a triple O eighteen from twenty twenty three. Now we bring it in where the only difference is the narrow 1 and 11 16th inch nut. And of course, there's a, a little asterisk here. The string spacing that happens when you do that also follows suit from the, the nut to the 12th fret and the string spacing. So I'm not saying literally we made it really skinny at the nut and didn't make differences along the way at the 12th fret. The string spacing that comes on what Martin calls a standard taper one and 11 sixteenths, that's the change we made on the triple O 18. In addition, we've also come out with the triple O 18 where the only difference is the top and bracing or Adirondack. But I know what you're gonna ask, so I'll answer it right off the bat. We don't currently offer triple O 18s that have both a narrow nut and an Adirondack top. So these are two different guitars. There is now a triple O 18 Adirondack with just Adirondack top and braces, and that still has the 2023 uh, wide nut. So uh, before I get too deep into that spoon, am I losing anybody? Oh, no, I don't think so. Uh, so, but it is important for people to understand that there are certain things you can change when you're designing a Martin guitar that are going to require other things to change. And so if you're changing your nut width to one and 11 16th inch, then the string spacing changes as well at the saddle and it changes to two and an eighth and that's the string spacing that martin had used from 1939 uh, on their basic models all the way up until the reimagined standard series came out in in uh, 2018 but the, here's another important difference what did not change is the neck profile those old Martins with one and 11 16th inch had what they called the low profile. And these current Mari's Music customs with one eleven sixteenth 16th retain the modified low oval that comes with the standard series. So it's just got a stand, what they call a standard fretboard taper, but the neck shape has not changed. It's still the comfortable modified low oval that is used on the standard series Martins. And so you can get a triple O 18 with that slightly narrower nut and the two and one eighth string spacing that goes with that nut width compared to the two and five thirty seconds of an inch string spacing that goes with the modern high performance taper with the one and three quarter inch nut width is if i remember what tim teal said it's literally the width of a light gauge high e string so you're not talking about a lot of difference in the string spacing, but it is true. It is slightly narrower. The uh, the edges of the E strings on the, each side are just in from the edge of the fretboard a tiny bit. So um, yeah, you probably wouldn't even notice it. And if you do notice it, you just your hand just moves a little one way or the other in relation to uh, the bridge and the and the fretboard, you know, and and you you basically. They're basically identical. They're almost identical in terms of string spacing. So very cool. Triple uh, O 18, certainly one of the really uh, popular instruments with its quarter inch scallop bracing. Triple O 28, which you mentioned, has quarter inch uh, 5 16th inch bracing. And, uh, but otherwise, same construction. We're still talking about the full blown traditional dovetail neck joint, uh, all solid tone woods, solid mahogany neck block you know, standard series construction that, you know, as, as I'm fond of saying, sets the standard for what a professional level guitar is supposed to be. So, so very cool. And so do you have some of those triple O's and 28's and 18's in stock right now? 
we actually do, as we're taping this, we have all of them. We have the narrow nut 0018, the narrow nut 0028, and we have the Adirondack 0018, as well as the Adirondack 0028. Hence the great idea and timing to make this week's episode of Martins and More all about our custom shop Martins, and I'm not done there. Yes, indeed. Well, Adirondack spruce, uh, red spruce, this is actually called Eastern Red Spruce. Um, it grows all the way from Northern Ontario to South Carolina in the Appalachian. So it's, you know, they call it Adirondack um, from the Adir Adirondack Mountains. The, it probably came from the Poconos and all over the, you know, New York and Pennsylvania in terms of what the, the spruce that Martin was using in the old days. Um, but Adirondack spruce has greater cross grain stiffness compared to the spruce uh, that grows out in the western portions of North America, the, uh, the coastal Sitka, the uh, Lutz spruce, it's a hybrid of white spruce and Sitka, and Engelman um, that comes from the Rocky Mountains and other places in Canada. Um, those are all less stiff. And so Adirondack is very high velocity, a lot of pop, uh, a lot of crispness and clarity. And in my opinion, it has the least coloring. So in other words, I consider it transparent. And I think from my ear, I think Adirondack allows me to hear the uh, coloring of the back and sides would even more than other spruces. Um, the other cool thing about Adirondack is it's got a higher attack ceiling. You can really strum it really hard, pick it really hard. Um, and it doesn't go into that sort of sort of uh, fuzz box distortion that you get from other spruces when you overdrive them. And so these guitars come with Adirondack spruce soundboards and Adirondack spruce bracing. Is that true? Exactly. And that goes back to your point when you said one change you might make with a custom shop actually means you're going to see more than one change. So Martin will not make an Adirondack top guitar with Sitka bracing or Lutz bracing per se, unless you do ask for it. But we talked moments ago about Somebody might come to us with a great idea. Are we going to impart our emotions or our expertise? That's something we certainly would say to Martin, make an Adirondack top. Unless we tell them, do something different with the bracing, they're going to assume that everybody who wants an Adirondack top also wants Adirondack bracing. I'm in that camp as well. And maybe just to be extremely clear about the whole process, if you're a person who wants an Adirondack top and you have your own reasons for getting bracing that's not Adirondack, it could be done, but you've got to speak up and ask for it. But yeah, to answer your quick question, these guitars with Adirondack tops that we're bringing from the custom shop into the standard series ideas, our Adirondack top guitars do have Adirondack braces. And you will hear people who will say that Martin used Sitka bracing in their golden era and they never used Adirondack. And we know that's not true because we know that Fred Martin, Chris Martin's grandfather, uh, said that his father, Frank Henry Martin, cut down a spruce tree in their own backyard and used it for bracing. So we know that they definitely, you know, and that couldn't have been a Sitka spruce tree. But we, so in other words, back then, they were not always consistent when it came to what, what they were using for bracing. And uh, Martin has chosen to uh, pair Adirondack bracing with their Adirondack tops. They've done a lot of their own research for their authentic series and stuff. If Martin was only using Sitka bracing in the 1930s, that's what they would be using on the authentic series. So, but um, but again, it is stiffer, so you do get you get more resistance, and you get a, it. It really helps those guitars roar when you dig into them, and once they break in over time and start to really. Uh, respond to lighter playing, uh, there's just this wonderful clarity and you just hear all of the detail in the rosewood harmonics or the more simpler mahogany harmonics or those really, really uh, ethereal shimmery uh, koa harmonics and so forth. And uh, when Adirondack first came back, I was a big fan of Sitka. I love the sound of Sitka. I like the warmth of Sitka. I like that sort of meatiness or fatness that you can get from a, a Sitka top. And at first I didn't like Adirondack. And I, I think a lot of people think Adirondack's automatically better. It's different. And, but I was a completely, you know, taken over by it. So yeah, I don't think I'll, you know, 
I fantasize about getting a, a, a high altitude spruce top someday on a guitar, but I love Adirondack and I think it's totally worth the, uh, the upgrade and the extra uh, money you have to pay to have an Adirondack spruce soundboard. So it's nice that you are saving people 16 months of waiting for a triple O 28 with Adirondack, an uh, Adirondack top and bracing because you have them for sale right now. And that's the idea, really. And the only other thing you could be doing, if somebody wants to go the Adirondack route, for example, with a triple O eighteen, if you look on the used market, you might be one of those players who either used to like, used to own, or always wanted to have a triple O eighteen Golden Era, for example. But you might not be able to find one. You might not want to buy a used guitar without a warranty. Maybe you love the sound of a triple O eighteen GE, but don't like the modified V neck. Same could be said for you know some of the Adirondack guitars. Martin used to make a triple O twenty eight with an Adirondack top, but again, maybe you didn't like the V neck, or maybe you just can't locate one. Part of the science behind what we're doing is equal parts. We want to find something that the market seems to want, and that Martin seems to want to not make. And for whatever reason, Martin's not <laughs> giving you a lot of choices to put an Adirondack top on a triple O twenty eight or a triple O eighteen currently. You can get a triple O 28 with a VTS Sitka top in the modern deluxe series. You can get some other guitars that have different appointments, but to find the standard series thinking with the only differences being the Adirondack upgraded tops, you'd have to go to the used market to get something similar. And you know, that just poses a whole other set of problems. If that's what you want, that's not a problem at all. If you're like in love with the triple O 18 golden era, I don't want to make claim that our triple O 18 custom shop is going to make you happy but maybe you like that tone and dislike everything else that, that comes about trying to locate one of those in 2023. And it's, it's not fair to say we're just taking ideas Martin used to make that they don't make anymore, but we do see too many people asking for these things. And if somebody like Spoon, you know, a few years ago asked for a triple OC 21, uh, I don't think that qualifies in my mind as something that the buying general public would probably gravitate to in this year. But when some, too many people seem to complain, you guys might be old enough to remember it wasn't that long ago that everything in the Martin catalog was one and 11 sixteenths. And then they finally had all these people saying, I want something with one and three quarter. Well, we did this exact idea way back then in the reverse. Spoon, you probably remember back when we opened our store in 03, it didn't take us long to start ordering guitars from Martin going in the other direction where it got away from their one and 11 16th inch, you know, complete catalog, we would bring in D28s and D18s with a wider nut. So we're just basically reversing course and we're trying to take the pulse of the market and see what people consistently say is wrong with the Martin lineup. And if we can plug a couple of holes, uh, it, it's not that risky. And to date, every idea we've had stayed so true to what made a triple O 18 great and a triple O 28 great. Again, we didn't take the idea where we improved upon it so far that we removed a lot of what it was. We're just giving you that nut width that you said you want or the Adirondack top that you said you want. It's not just the triple O's that we're doing it to, but it seems to be very popular, uh, at least in the quantities we're ordering. Yes, indeed. And you have mentioned uh, that you were not even a trend center. You were a pioneer really back when you first came out and were offering uh, some models with a one and three quarter inch nut width that had only had a one and 11 16th inch um, that without requiring all of the other changes that you had in the Golden Era series that offered those kind of nut, nut widths. So that's interesting that, you know, like you said, you're, you're reversing the, you're kind of reversing the order now. And you all have also, we were talking about the triple O's and now Martin has gone back after many years of having some triple O's with long scale and some triple O's with short scale and, and the OM's were, you know, all long scale. Now triple O's are very much back in style with the short scale neck. And so you're ordering these there, but you have also ordered some custom OM's from time to time. Uh, which have the long scale and quarter inch bracing match to the long scale neck. Now we've been talking about those, you know, changes here and there. Um, what about modified V's? Do you have people asking for modified V's and have you ordered any customs that come with a modified V? Well, kind of, sort of, but I'm, I'm going to buck the trend and tell you the truth. This next guitar I want to talk about was 
me who actually came to market and said, you know what? I think this guitar deserves to be remade. I, I brag about it all the time and I'm so lucky to own it. My wife, Lori, gave me an OM28V for our first married Christmas back in 1998. And that thing has blossomed and broken in and almost been what's well, been broken at times. It's become a really, really sentimental guitar to me for the most obvious of reasons. We decided it would be fun to make that guitar or a reasonably close replica. So a couple years ago, we designed it with the VTS Sitka top, modified V-neck, and left the rest of it to your imagination. We're not going to booger up that sound hole and take a big tooth out of it. And we didn't, you know, change as much as what has happened with mine, but, but it has my short saddle belly bridge with the drop-in saddle. It's got the one and three-quarter inch nut with two and five thirty seconds at the string spacing at the saddle. And it's realistically a reasonable reminder of what my guitar is. It's certainly not an authentic version. The word authentic shouldn't be anywhere near it. But yes, the modified V-neck is on that guitar. And I forget what we're affectionately calling that because we have to follow some pretty strict guidelines with Martin as far as what we call guitars. But that's an OM28 with a VTS Sitka top and the modified V-neck. And it's probably the only guitar in the bunch, if I'm remembering correctly, that would have the V-neck. And it may be the only brand new Martin guitar available for sale anywhere in the world that has that combination of a VTS top, a short saddle so you can use under saddle pickups, but uh, still has the looks and the neck and string spacing of the uh, long popular OM28V. That's pretty cool. But then you also have, uh, you know, we had the, to go back to the, the uh, guitars that just came in with these triple O's, you have also ordered OM28s with an Adirondack top that still had the modified low oval profile and, and like the modern neck. Is that true as well? That's correct. And, and as I'm thinking about this, uh, you know, as we speak, the only thing we really haven't done well with, and we probably tried it once and it didn't take off for whatever reason, was a narrow nut OM28. So I don't believe we currently offer an OM28 with Sitka, but narrow nut, and I think that's just didn't uh, it just didn't catch fire like we hoped. Well, I think people when they hear OM, some people think uh, finger style, and, and uh, you know, and that makes them think of wider string spacing. But the you know, with the modern high performance neck, the difference between the two and the eighth string spacing and the two and five thirty seconds string spacing, as I mentioned, is is quite negligible. However, you have done a OM that had a narrower nut. That was the ones that was based on the old OM uh, John Mayer. Didn't you also do some custom ones that were based on his uh, signature model at some point? Or you may even still have some, do you still have those? We do have a John Mayer custom shop model here or a John Mayer inspired, but it's not the OM JM that we're paying homage to. It's actually the OM 28 JM, which was the original Martin custom shop limited edition John Mayer that quote unquote started it all. It's a dovetail instrument that follows in the footsteps of the Engelman top, the full dovetail construction, uh, narrow one and 11 16th inch nut. And we actually have this guitar ordered two different ways with and without the Fishman electronics in there. So we're probably guilty of trying to replicate as best we can, of course, with missing signatures and some some of that fancy inlay that was along the headstock and, and that and the stylization that that John really brought to that first model. You know, nuts and bolts idea of it is here. The John Mayer OM28 JM is what we're going for both with and without the E. Well, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And John Mayer's favorite guitar had been an OM28 V, just like Mari's guitar. Uh, but he also grew up playing electric guitars and he wanted a, a, a neck that would be uh, more conducive to the kind of music that he plays on his electric guitars. So he wanted the skinnier nuts. It's 111 16th inch. It also had a low profile, not the modern, uh, modern modified low oval that Martin's using today. Uh, and that's on these models, if I recall correctly, these uh, custom shop models. And like he said, like Mari said, there's certain things that aren't on it from the old, old original one. Uh, Martin doesn't allow people to replicate certain uh, cosmetic things about signature mo artist signature models. Um, and in the case of the John Mayer model, it had a special aluminum 
aluminum alloy inlay uh, at certain points on the guitar that they don't allow anybody to replicate. And I don't think they could even uh, buy that stuff anymore to, to, to uh, replicate it anyway. But so it is a very cool guitar. Engelman Spruce, uh, of course, Mayer's old OM originally, was originally Sitka. And at the advice of Dick Boak, when they were designing this together, Dick recommended uh, Engelman. Uh, Mayer loved it and has had Engelman at, put on almost all of his custom Martins ever since then. So a very cool guitar. And um, I didn't realize you were ordering some of them with electronics. So that's pretty cool as well. So already uh, coming as an acoustic electric guitar. So that's, so that's basically the OMs. Um, and um, I know uh, you have speculated about someday ordering OM18s again, um, just because no one else does that. But for right now, uh, you have the, the uh, OM28V, um, uh, special OM28V that was inspired by your guitar. You have these OM28 style Engelman top guitars that were inspired by the uh, John Mayer model. So that's really cool. I've got some great news for you. It sounds like we didn't confirm with you in the time that passed. We certainly did sign and enter the order for the OM18. So that's official. Oh, very exciting. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, I look forward to doing a sequel to this episode once you, once those come in. <laughs> I look forward to seeing them and playing them. Mark your calendar for next spring. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break in the action and play a new game for season three. This is our version of 20 questions. Spoon's going to think of a really great Martin or Blue Ridge guitar, and I get 20 opportunities to see if I know what's in his mind. Spoon, are you ready? Yes, just to be clear about the rules, uh, Mari gets 20 questions maximum, but he only gets to guess up to three models to qualify. So hmm. whenever you're ready, Maestro. Let's begin. Is it a Martin guitar? Yes. Is it a Dreadnought? No. Is it smaller than a double O? No. Is it bigger than a double O? Yes. Is it a triple O? No. <clears throat> Is it an OM? No. Is it a GP? No. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> is it an M? It is. Is it in current production? Not exactly. Is it an M36 Adirondack? It is a Martin Custom Shop M36 style with an Adirondack spruce top. All right, folks, this is only the second time we play this game, but I'm learning what I should be asking next time. I should have asked along the way, is this guitar a custom shop? I was almost going to cheat and say no and change it to a jumbo, but this is a guitar that is currently at Maury's Music. That's why I made, that's one of the reasons I picked it. Uh, this is based on the M36, which is currently the only production grand auditorium size in the Martin lineup. And uh, for those who are not familiar with M's, they have the same top silhouette as a jumbo, so the back and sides of a jumbo, but they have a, the depth of an OM. And it's really the other way around. The M came out before the jumbo, and Chris Martin said, why don't we take a M and give it a dreadnought size uh, depth to, to make, because uh, Martin had never had an official jumbo. But the M's guitars were originally size F archtop guitars from the 1930s, um, Martin's jazz models, which were actually the most expensive Martins you could buy in the, in the Great Depression era. And in modern times, by modern times meaning 1960s, players like David Bromberg and Arlo Guthrie, among others, uh, had old Martin Fs converted by their favorite local luthiers to flat top guitars. And Bromberg brought his uh, custom flat top to the Martin factory and showed it to 
to uh, Fred Martin, uh, the Mr. Martin at the time, and said, uh, you should make these. And that's what Martin did. And that's what they originally came out with the M38, which actually had a pearl rosette. And the M36 uh, followed it, which did not have a pearl rosette. It was originally called an M35, but they gave it a rosewood bridge. And somebody inside Martin said, well, we can't call it a 35. It's not exactly style 35. So it's now style 36. And you can buy one from Mori's Music with the modern high performance neck and the uh, same string spacing that comes with high performance, modified low oval profile, with a nice wide uh, top, Adirondack top. So it will take all of the power you want to put into it and just spit it out and say, is that all you got? Because these uh, <laughs> Adirondack, uh, big topped Adirondack guitars, lots of power, lots of sounds. Uh, and I'm assuming you have a video of this up already somewhere. Oh, that's correct. You can certainly find that video on the videos tab of the M36 Adirondack product page at mariesmusic.com. But I'm going to ask you what everyone's thinking. How many guesses did I need to reach that answer? Oh, I forgot to say out loud, didn't I? So it was, you were on the second hand. So <gasps> I'm guessing we were up to eight. That may have been the eighth guess. Ouch. Maybe the seventh. I forgot to, I forgot to. Because uh, you got it. I'm surprised you got it so quickly. So I, uh, I was taken aback. Well, is it fair to assume I did not beat the record from the first week we did this where you got it in six? I believe that's correct. You did not beat the record. Well, speaking of the custom M's, and you alluded to it so comfortably, we also have some custom jumbos in the shop. And we took this idea and actually ran with it and then took that idea and ran with that. And then took that idea and ran a little bit further. And boy, <laughs> my legs are tired. We took the J40. And when I say J40, let me back up and, and be more clear. The J40 is the jumbo that you can buy from the Martin Guitar current catalog. That's the only choice you have. And we frankly had so many people, uh, they weren't all named Frank, but we've had so many people call in to say, I want a jumbo, but I don't want Pearl. I don't want style 40. So we went, instead of taking the J40 and customizing it, we went back to the OM28 to get an even more responsive bracing pattern, or I should say bracing thickness. We have the OM28 built in the style of a J40. We also have that same custom built with an Adirondack top. And we also have that custom built with VTS Adirondack. So when you go to any other Martin dealer, you're going to have the J40 to pick from. You come to Mari's Music, you can get a J40, you can get a J28, a J28 Adirondack, or a J28 Adirondack VTS. And if you thought the OM28 was a responsive guitar, making it into a jumbo is like driving a tank around town. Well, we took that <laughs> idea and built it up and then built it up again. And I don't want to name drop, but we actually sold the custom shop VTS Adirondack Jumbo to a, a pretty high profile guitar player that we got connected to through Dick Boak. And it was pretty neat to see that somebody of that status is going to arrive with that guitar. But if you want to talk about strumming on a guitar and having the high attack ceiling and the lack of compression or the lack of being squashed down, I mean, a lot of guitars are powerful and some of the stuff Martin's making these days in the Authentics uh, would certainly rival it. But talk about power. These jumbos, frankly, all three of them are just so good. But when you get into the J28 style with the top being both vintage tone system, which is Torrefaction, and Adirondack, oh my, was that thing neat. Yes, quarter inch bracing on that large top, uh, very different from the typical Martin jumbo. Uh, to me, the typical Martin Jumbo is like an oversized triple low. It's still a very gathered, punchy voice. Um, it pops out with a very strong mid-range. And you take quarter-inch scala bracing, and that top just resonates in a different way. It vibrates in a different way. You get much more spacious tone coming out of it, more, you know, more similar to a oversized OM, which is... A, essentially what it is. And uh, very, very cool. Adirondack spruce, quarter inch bracing 
on that big jumbo body. Uh, jumbos, you know, jumbos are shaped different than dreadnoughts. They're both large guitars. They both have big voices, big bass response. But jumbos sound differently from dreadnoughts, and they have, again, thinking of the OM, a more balanced across the strings uh, tone. The mid range, it's like you have the equalizer more more even. It still has big round bass, and, but you get uh, you don't get that mid-range scoop that you get out of dreadnoughts. So uh, so they make really good finger style guitars. And you could certainly finger style with dreadnoughts. I do that all the time. But jumbos, uh, jumbos have uh, a lovely EQ pattern for finger playing, finger style playing, but with the quarter inch bracing and the extra resonance, uh, it's just, you know, supercharging on that. So very cool, very cool indeed. So just go over again one more time. What versions um, do you order that in again? Like what are the changes on it on your jumbos? Oh, sure. We, we basically take the OM28 into a jumbo size. So we call that a J28. And the only difference there is the fact that the OM28 body is replaced with the J body. So it's not a 40, it's not Adirondack, it's nothing special in those regards, but it's a jumbo sized OM28. But with the but with the quarter inch bracing. Oh yeah, it, it's the only thing. It's basically it, what it is. It's an OM twenty eight with a J body, and nothing else changed away from the OM twenty eight. Got it. All and right. then the middle model there uh, to bridge the gap. We we offer that with an Adirondack top. Still, it's an OM twenty eight Adirondack in the jumbo body. It's nothing else borrowed from a J forty. It's just the J is the the shape difference. Uh, and and I. You know, working backwards, I, I really bragged up that Adirondack VTS version. But make no mistake, the standard lower of the three, the poor man's, if you would call it, if you could even dare call it that, the regular J28 with Sitka, wonderful, wonderful instrument. And and we aim that at most of those players who might want a J40, uh, but not get into the 40 styling. So it's not for anybody to say that the the other two versions are lesser than the, the Torified you know, VTS Adirondack version of the J. But yeah, th those three did pretty well for us. We don't stock as many of them as we do the triple O's and OM's. But we, you know, being honest, we certainly do keep them in regular production. And when they sell through, we do reorder. So we're not going to keep as many of them on hand as everything else. But uh, by the same token, we're not done ordering. We think they're great. And, and it's, it's kind of competition proof. There really isn't a lot you can buy from Martin in regular production that would would get that done if you want that we want to be the one that that connects you with it excellent excellent so i know um probably we're going to have a short drum roll here what most people have been waiting for through this whole thing dreadnoughts the dreadnought <laughs> body size 14 fret dreadnought is certainly the most popular uh, flat top steel string acoustic guitar design since acoustic guitars were converted to steel strings in the 1920s and 1930s. And of course, the Martin D28 and the Martin D18 are the ship of the line uh, dreadnoughts in the Martin fleet. And you are now selling those with those uh, simple but important customizations that you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show. That's 100% correct. We now offer and stock, and when I say that, as we're taping this program, these guitars are here. The D18 with a narrow nut, the D18 with an Adirondack top, the D28 with an Adirondack top, and the D28 with a narrow 1 and 11 16th inch nut. And those guitars of this entire episode, they're probably the bread and butter. I think it's fair to say every time we get the triple O's, the M's, the OM's, uh, the jumbos, the D's, are really, uh, talk about burying the lead, we're almost at the end of this program, we're finally talking about them, but they are probably what put us on the map as far as if you want to find out which dealers are ordering which kinds of customs. We're trying to be and have successfully become known for at least one of the prominent dealers who orders the two most popular dreadnoughts in the standard series with your choice of either narrow nut or Adirondack top. And again, we talked uh, not that long ago about what you'd have to do to get something like this on the used market, which is going to pose a set of its own problems. 
You'd have to go to something like a D18 Golden Era, D28 Marquee. They can be found, and depending on what you want to get as far as a feature set, you might even appreciate going and finding a, I don't know, a 1997 guitar that has the features you want. But in the year 2023, with a full lifetime warranty and all the attention to detail that goes into what a lot of people are saying are some of the best Martin guitars coming out of production in these last you know 10 years, Going with an Adirondack top, for example, on a D28, the only thing you could do differently that would be in, in the ballpark, and Spoon, I'd like love to get your opinion about this. If you're one of those customers who might listen to this podcast and find an interest in the D28 with an Adirondack top, would you say that the D28 Modern Deluxe, although it's not the same, would, would be also on somebody's wish list? I guess possibly. I think um, having the uh, BTS... Sitka spruce or Lutz spruce, the, the Western spruce, I'll just call it for now. Um, when you do the VTS, it does get a little bit of a chime to it that sounds like Adirondack. And uh, that's what really sold Tim Teal on it to begin with when they were first experimenting with doing Torrefaction after Mike Dickinson had gone over to Finland to, to, uh, to a seminar about it and all that. Uh, he said it really, he could hear this chime in it that was sounded like the old Martins in the museum. So you're going to get a little bit of that if you're going to go with the BTS top on the modern deluxe. Um, so maybe, maybe that's an option, but I don't think you really have a, a direct comparison option available. If someone is going to buy a used D18 with a 111 16th inch nut, it's not going to have forward shifted scallop bracing. It's going to have what we used to call rear shifted, which isn't the true rear shifted, but it's, it's not forward shifted bracing and it's not scallop bracing. Uh, it's also going to have a black pick guard and a uh, black binding, and it's not going to have the open back vintage tuners and, uh, and, you know, and so forth. If you tried to buy a D28 used on the market with a 1 and 11 16 inch nut, it will have the non scallop bracing that the modern D28 has, but it's not forward shifted bracing. It also doesn't have the antique white binding and the what I consider like 1950s looking or late 40s looking Martin appearance and uh, cosmetic appearance or the 1930s style re, you know, open back tuners. So there really is nothing out there. You can't go on on eBay or or retro or whatever it's called where, where people go and buy these these things. Um, there isn't a direct comparison. You will not be getting a used Martin with a 1 and 11 16th inch nut that uh, compares directly to these guitars. Otherwise, you'd already covered the Adirondack thing. There were no Adirondack spruce topped, straight braced, you know, not, uh, Martins in the modern era. They, you know, we do know that there was some Adirondack that showed up in the 50s here and there and, um, or the very late 40s, but really, uh, you're not going to go out anywhere and find a D28 the way they make them today with Adirondack t spruce for the top and the bracing. Um, and so, so not on the used market, certainly. So uh, these are really interesting. Uh, they fit a niche that has people on the Internet looking for this and trying to find this. And they're going to land, you know, and they land on Mari's Music. And here's what they, you know, if I... I could call up Mari's Music today or fill out the uh, custom shop request form for a D28 with Adirondack Spruce Top, and I would have to wait a year at least uh, for it to, uh, to come in to Mari's Music. And fortunately, you guys were smart enough to, uh, to order them already so people can just walk to their computer, look it up, give you a call or hit the button and and order it and have it you know this week very cool well thank you and as much as that's a tee up for uh, really making us sound smart and we appreciate the accolades if this does put the thought in your mind but we're not exactly there yet you might want some other differences please by all means let this be a springboard for you to want to give us a call and hash some things up maybe you love our idea we took the d28 put an adirondack top on it but you have the perfect little change that'll make it exactly yours. That is what we're here for. So as much as we do hope that a lot of you guys find what we have in stock or on its way to be here very soon, 
if it's a guitar that you do have to make all your own, uh, we're just as happy to do that. And it, it's really been a lot of fun. Uh, Andrew does a great job with our customs, and we really have a great relationship with uh, our rep inside Martin that has a really, really big knowledge of how everything works. It's all streamlined. When you're working with us, you're working with a dealer who knows the custom shop process. And it's not more important for us to connect you with something we have here. If it's not right, it's not right. And we're always, always proud to say we want to get you the right guitar the first time. If these guitars that we spec'd out are still missing that one important ingredient, you know, let us work together with you to get that done the right way. Well said, well said. And well played, because these guitars uh, all play very well. Uh, I've always been very impressed when I've gone to Mars Music to visit, to shoot videos and things of that nature that, um, that uh, you, you, know, you don't just know the custom shop, you know Martin guitars and you know how to set them up well and make sure they're set up well and all that. So, so experience counts and you've been at this for a long time as a musician and, and as a dealer of Martin and Blue Ridge guitars. So, so I, I'm glad you're ordering custom guitars. I know that it's, uh, it's a long wait and it's now longer than it ever has been uh, in the custom shop era. So, so uh, you're, uh, you're ahead of the game with some of these, uh, you know, very intelligently thought out uh, models. Well, thank you, Spoon. And speaking of experience, we certainly hope that you had a good experience listening to this episode of Martins and More. And we really appreciate all your support. If you do enjoy this program, please consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. We might even read your review on the air. Tomas writes, Love y'all's podcast, knowledge passed on, camaraderie, and humor. Glad I stumbled upon you when I was on the hunt for my 00028 Ambertone and some persimmon bridge pins. Thank you so much, Tomas. We really appreciate that. Yes, that was great. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing uh, from more of our listeners and viewers for those who are watching the podcast on YouTube. You're not going to call them readers like I did last week? <laughs> Speaking of readers, where are mine? No. Um, yeah, and some, well, some of them are reading the, uh, the comments because we get a lot of uh, nice comments on those videos. So, so I look forward to reading those. Well said, well read. From all of us at Maury's Music, thanks for reading. <laughs> Took me a second. Hear you later. This has been a presentation of Maury's Music, your trusted source for Martin and Blue Ridge guitars. Find us online at maurysmusic.com. Music.com.